In this video, I'm going to introduce folks to working with the sequencer inside of the Unreal Game Engine. This is going to be a multi-part video because there's actually a lot that you can do with a sequencer inside of Unreal. Sequencers can be used as far as animation elements. It can also be used as far as taking cinematic shots by using a camera. And also, too, you can even go so far as rendering out your videos from the Unreal Game Engine. However, for the most basic here, I want to show you as far as adding a sequencer and getting a couple of animations in place whenever you're ready to start working on a project that incorporates animations. Now, for this demo too, we are just going to work with getting an animation functioning. There are tons of other things you can do, including trigger events that will make things move, uh, and also show and hide, uh, even changing light colors or starting particle systems. So you have a lot of options here. So let's go ahead and get started. The only thing I've done is I've made a basic default level. I'm not even concerned right now about having a player character in the environment here. And the only other thing I did was I made just a new material just so that you can see what I'm doing in the environment here. When you are ready to start working with a cinematic, the first thing you're going to do is up on your menu bar here, there's a cinematic options. You can click on the drop down and you can add a level sequence. This is going to add an icon to your environment that is going to control as far as the animation goes. So I'm going to go ahead and add a level sequence. These are saved to your project folder. So maybe I call this demo sequence. We'll call it basic since we're not going to be doing some heavy lifting in this. Now, a couple of things to point out. First off, in your game environment, notice that you now have a sequencer icon in there. Don't worry, whenever you play, test the game, or you publish the game, user is not going to see that. However, what should have also happened for you is down on the main bar here where your content browser normally is, a sequencer environment should have opened for you. The primary thing, if you have ever worked with things like After Effects, Adobe Animate, or even animating in the other game engine Unity, you are going to be tracking different elements in the environment as far as actors are concerned. So if I click on the track button and go right up to Actor to Sequencer, notice current actors that are stored in my World Outliner are present here, and I could actually click them to work on them. So where this is pulling this information from is over here in the World Outliner. Now, a couple of things to point out here. I'm going to go ahead and reminimize this. Your sequencer actually likes to work with static meshes. So in previous videos, I've been focusing strictly on geometry because of the fact that you can edit and tweak geometry as far as the different mode tools relating to geometry. So I want to demo two animation processes, both using a static mesh, but then also how you can convert a geometric brush to be a static mesh that you can then animate. So the first item I'm going to work with here is under basic for the actors. I'm going to go ahead and grab a sphere static mesh and just drag and drop it into the environment. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come into the outliner and I'm going to just call this static sphere animate just so that I have a little bit of a description whenever I come in to track it as far as the animation goes. Now, Unreal uses a keyframe or frame-based animation environment where on this left side, we're going to have our tracking elements, but then on the right side, you actually have the timeline for the sequencer. Now, one other thing I'd like to draw your attention to before we dive in and actually start animating, one important thing to consider with your sequencer is down at the bottom here, you have as far as a working range start and a working or view range time start. But more importantly, over on the side here, you have the view range end time, but then you also have the working range end. So for instance, this is important that if I wanted to export my video. So to give you a for instance, if I come in here 
and let's whoops let's change that to 120 there so I just clicked on that and changed that to 120 you now see as far as the view range and I can either both zoom in or zoom out so I can see the overall range here that is just something in the next video, you want to be careful of whenever you're exporting, because literally if you have 165 frames and you're stopping your animation at, say, 90 frames, Unreal is still going to go through and render out the blank animation frames. So let's go ahead, let's get to the good stuff. So here I have just a basic static mesh sphere ready to go. So coming back to that track, drop-down menu that I pointed to earlier. I'm going to go under action, actor to sequence. And notice now I can see the sphere popping up in my list. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that there. Now, depending on how your sphere is set up, you may not even have this drop-down arrow here. But at the end here, you have a plus symbol. And when you hover over it, it says track. Tracking, if you click on that, you have a lot of different options here. You can nest sequences, you have paths that you can follow, specific events, audio elements that are going to play, and also to as far as attachments to other objects. Again, we're talking basics here, everybody. The most basic animation elements you can work with is transform. So go ahead and click on that. And what you should get is you should have the static sphere extend out and now you should have this sub transform section if you extend this out even further now you should see some common animation elements as far as location rotation and scale now to talk a little bit further about each of these here over on your right hand side you have arrows as far as being able to go between and setting the different key points here that you'd like to start at. But probably the most important button out of these three is the plus symbol. The plus symbol is going to add a key or a frame to the specific point in your timeline here. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to actually position the playback head. And to do this, you have the little red kind of pointing down arrow. And I'm going to put this at zero. And what I'm going to do for just this demonstration is I'm going to use location. So what I want to do is I want to record a key at this location. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus symbol. Now it might be a little bit hard to see here, but what you should see happen now is you should have a little red dot. Think of this as you're making a little post-it note for Unreal saying, hey, remember this location uh, for future reference. So now I say, OK, I'm going to go ahead and what we call scrub my playback head to the 60th frame. I've positioned the playback head and now I'm going to come into the scene and move my object, in this case my sphere, to the next location I'd like it to be at. I'm going to come back down and then I'm going to click again to add another keyframe for location. And now if you want to, if you scrub back through in olden days, we called this tweening. What's nice about a tween is, as you can see, Unreal did all of the heavy work for you versus a frame by frame animation. So what's nice about this is it does go through and make the animation for you. Now, just to go ahead and test our animation here, the last thing I'd like to do is up on the main menu bar for the sequencer, you need to save your sequence. So I click on the little floppy disk there, it saves it, and now my animation is ready to go. Also, just to show you too, under the content browser, you should now see a brand new sequence popping up here as far as storage goes. And actually, if you click on your sequence editor, this is an important part that you wanna remember. When you work with a sequencer, it also has its own set of details that you can work with over on the right hand side. But by default, however, to point out under the playback drop down here, autoplay is not clicked. So to demo for you, like if I click right now to play this level, notice that the sphere isn't actually doing anything. It's just hanging out there. Now, if I stop though, 
and I tell it to autoplay, and then I hit play. You see how it plays through my animation for me that I can watch it. Finally, you have a couple of extra options here as far as the play rate. Do you want a random start time? Also too, do you want it to loop? One of the things that I would point out is things like loop indefinitely. If you're looking to do something like a platformer, looping indefinitely, so we can wait a second here and you'll see it. You see how it just snapped back to this start here. If you're thinking from a platform standpoint, I would encourage you to navigate or animate to the right, but then animate it going back to the left. So you don't have that snap back there, but it is an option. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here. In the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth as far as how you can actually use the geometry brushes and some things that you need to take into consideration whenever you're going in and adding those in.